Never gonna give you up. Never gonna let you down. Never gonna run around and desert you. Never gonna make you cry. Never gonna say goodbye. Never gonna tell a lie and hurt you. Ah, uh, Marvel Superhero Island, where you can feel like you stepped into a comic book. And I do mean comic book. The other parks, New York was kinda trying to look like a real New York neighborhood, but this isn't the real world, this is the Marvel Universe. A crazy upside down world where raccoons have machine guns and Jeff Winger is a banker instead of a lawyer. And Bones is a receptionist. This is trying to look like a three-dimensional representation of a page from a comic book, with larger-than-life colors and imagery, and of course, great details throughout the land. You can even eavesdrop on the Avengers radio chatter. Pat the superhero exchange, number 1934. This is Captain America. All Avengers, listen closely. Our individual attacks on Carnage are having no effect. We have to combine our efforts and act as one if we hope to defeat it. Uh, Cap, there was probably a shorter, more efficient way to say, hey, let's use teamwork, guys. The heroes patrol the streets on their quads. That's the mode of transport Spider-Man's known for, right? But before you even get close enough to notice all that, you notice the Hulk coaster! The flimsy pretense here is that we're entering Bruce Banner's lab where we see videos about his transformation and we're trying to recreate his experiment in the hopes that maybe now we'll get it right. So we get into the Gamma Ray Accelerator, but something goes wrong, which doesn't surprise us because by the time we got to this point we already saw what happened to everyone else who got to this point. Although it might surprise us that it launches on two instead of three. The whole history of roller coasters is like clunk, 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 and then down the hill. But this one is like clunk, 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 clunk. Oh, who cares? At least they made some effort with the story. And even if they hadn't, this coaster rocks. Then there's Storm Force Acceleratron, a spinning teacup ride themed after the Halle Berry comic book role that didn't single-handedly and quite unfairly destroy DC's faith in female superhero movies, and Doctor Doom's Fearfall, which is no Tower of Terror, but hey, fresh air. But the crown jewel of Marvel rides is the amazing adventures of Spider-Man. I know, who could have predicted they'd give the best ride to their most popular character? You enter the Daily Bugle, where there is sadly no Elizabeth Banks to greet us, but there is a dimly lit room with a portrait of a J.K. Simmons character, making this the closest we'll ever get to an attraction based on Portal 2. And even though I know this ride was made 15 years ago, and I looked it up, that's Chris Edgerly as J. Jonah Jameson, I swear he sounds just like Alex Hirsch as Grunkle Stan. My people are gone. Half of them abandoned ship, the other probably trapped out there somewhere. Cold and hungry, and I'm getting any good pictures. I'd fire all of you if I could. As we move through the unsurprisingly empty offices of a print media former empire, we see the standard Universal Theme Park Q televisions, showing us a news broadcast of trouble in the Big Apple. Listen, things are going from bad to worse out there. I gotta go save this. I mean, save some of this action on film. Wow, Peter Parker really sucks at having a secret identity. Thank you, Parker. You're as useful as a wet pile of newspapers. Or really, any sort of newspaper. Print is dead and newspapers are worthless. Hey, thanks for coming to the Daily Bugle before it's demolished and replaced with the Shake Shack. So Jonah throws us all in the new experimental scoop vehicle and has us go out where the crime is. Because he'll do anything to save money, but he doesn't care one way or the other what happens to insurance premiums. The ride itself uses vehicles similar to Indiana Jones, but it also intersperses 3D screens throughout the ride, allowing it to combine the best parts of a dark ride with the best parts of a motion simulator. Did you see that? The spider signal! Ah, uh, yes, the spider signal. A sure sign that what they really wanted to make was a Batman ride. Spidey carelessly jumps off the hood of our car and sends us spinning until we almost crash into a truck. Our hero. But we swerve out of the truck's way and duck into... Warehouse 13? And then we encounter the Sinister Syndicate, the villainous league led by Dr. Octopus, consisting of villains known for stretching or throwing things. They're gonna 3D gimmick us to death! And they recently updated the ride and even gave Stan Lee a voice cameo at the end. And an animated cameo in the ride, running into a screening of Stan Lee Presents the Clone Saga. And the ride's on Stan Lee Boulevard, here at Stan Lee vs. Stan Lens of Stan Venture. Lovely Stan! Wonderful Stan! The land also includes two counter-service eateries, the Fantastic Four Cafe, where you can grab a bite at the Baxter Commissary. Uh, apparently the Baxter Commissary shares a wall with Doctor Doom's hideout slash arcade. That sounds like a recipe for mishap. 
and the Captain America Diner, which, as I said, is counter service, not table service. So you don't get served by that waitress Captain America saved who was in Growing Pains and What Women Want and also the voice of Gretchen in Recess. Man, Marvel movies have some weird cameos. Now, obviously, this was all built before the mouse bought the spider, and for a while, we were all nervous about the future of this land. But after the Disney purchase, Universal not only remastered Spidey's animation, but they went ahead and built Transformers over in Production Central instead of saving it for a potential last-minute emergency overlay here. Both of these moves hinted that they were pretty confident in their ability to keep the spider in their web, at least for a while. And it looks like, for the moment, Universal is holding on to theme park rights on this coast. So, sorry fangirls, you won't be meeting Loki in the Norway Pavilion anytime soon, but Disney is free to put some Iron Man armor and a Kinect game in California's interventions. That's... exciting. And they're bringing Stark Tours to Hong Kong Disneyland. That's... too far away for me to be excited about. Even if Disney does eventually swipe Marvel's Florida rights away from Universal, it wouldn't be that hard to reframe this land. Except for Spider-Man, every one of the rides is generic enough that you could easily slap a different coat of paint on it and give it a new name. You'd have to redecorate a lot of buildings, but nothing unmanageable. But in the meantime, as much as I would love to see what Disney could do with Marvel, I'm glad we have this. Sadly, it's a hell of a lot better than we'll ever get for DC. Which is actually a good reflection of their cinematic universes. Next time, we'll go even more cartoony with Toon Lagoon. Hey, Spider-Man, Spider-Man. He's a spider and he's a man. Can he swing from a thing, from that thing? He can swing, I don't remember the words to Spider-Man. Hey, GeekVision.TV, it's a website for you and me. It's got nerds, it's got geeks, plus a handful of theme park freaks. Check out GeekVision.TV.